Beef stroganoff. My mum always used rump steak. It was cheap and flavoursome. Traditionally, fillet steak is used, but the cooking time of this recipe means a cheaper, fattier cut is preferable over fillet steak. It's also expensive, so now I use ribeye. Two ribeye steaks, maybe 500 grams in total. Worcestershire sauce, three seconds worth of shakes. Two tablespoons of curry powder. Three or four teaspoons of English mustard. Let's start with this. Get a nice sturdy wooden chopping board. Not a glass chopping board, or a tiny chopping board, or a tiny glass chopping board. This isn't an episode of Come Dine With Me. If you have a tiny glass chopping board, shut this audiobook and don't open it again until Amazon have delivered a nice sturdy wooden chopping board, please. Then, using a nice sharp knife, cut the steaks into very thin slices. If you need a human object to quantify very thin slices, think of a piece of meat the size of a one pound lighter you'd buy at a market. Put the slices into a nice large bowl. Again, this is a bugbear of mine when you watch a cooking show and see them putting a ton of ingredients into a tiny bowl. Then they stir it and it all slops over the side. Fuck that, use a big bowl. Now, flood the bowl with Worcestershire sauce, the curry powder and the English mustard. This may bite your nostrils a bit. Give it a good stir. I use my hands to get everything really coated well. This should not be overly wet. It should coat the beef nicely. Cover with foil or cling film and stick in the fridge. Uh, marinate this overnight if you can. Uh, it does make for a richer, deeper flavour. But if you can't be arsed, leave it in the fridge for, at the very minimum, two hours. Make sure you take the beef out of the fridge at least an hour before you use it. Then, in a big deep frying pan, add a couple of tablespoons of oil and a knob of butter. Fry the beef strips in batches. Do not throw it all in at once. Do it little by little. Once the pieces are brown and your kitchen smells lovely, put the fried steak back into the bowl and leave to one side to rest a bit. As the steak sits and rests, it'll release some steamy, beefy moisture that you definitely will want to use. For the next stage, you will need butter, extra virgin olive oil, one extra large white stroke Spanish onion, halved and sliced, maybe an extra half too if you're cooking a big batch, one tablespoon-ish plain flour, two tablespoons tomato puree stirred into 200 millilitres of boiling water, beef stock, either a cube or the good stuff you get from proper butchers, or even at a push, two oxo cubes. This is what my mum used to use. Now in a large frying pan, melt a big knob of butter and add a nice bit of extra virgin olive oil. Let them heat up. The butter will foam and start to colour. Add the onions and cook them until they're translucent, a bit see-through, and they're starting to brown and catch on the bottom of the pan. This is cool. All those little bits that burn and catch and stick to the bottom give it a nice flavour. Turn up the heat slightly and add the flour to the onions. I always feel at this point like I fucked it up a bit. Adding the flour to the buttery brown onions makes them go all congealed and stick to the bottom, and it looks awful. Even now there's a moment when I think, ah, fucked it. I haven't. We haven't. Turn the temperature down a bit and then, bit by bit, add the tomato puree and boiling water, and then the stock too. Scrape the bottom of the pan with a wooden spoon to get all the bits off. Adjust the heat so the liquid is gently rolling. Now, take the bowl with the beef in and tip the lot into the oniony liquid. Even that lovely juice that's oozed out of the resting steak. Give it a stir and now we wait. I am not sure how long this is going to take. We want the liquid to reduce down until it's a rich, thick gravy. The beef should be not quite fall apart tender, but really, really close. We're almost finished. This is the point where I say goodbye to my mum's original recipe. This is my little adaptation. Bye, mum. You will need butter, a whole punnet of mushrooms, any kind. I use either chestnut, little button, or portobello's chopped up. Don't use enoki or chanterelle or sep. Uh, you could, I guess. I just, I haven't. One bunch of flat leaf parsley, the size of a tangerine. Ball it tight and chop it finely. Soured cream. 
Melt a large knob of butter in a frying pan, add all the mushrooms, fry until golden brown, stir in the parsley. You can do this at any point during the cooking process and just leave them in a bowl until you're ready to use them. Once the beef is tender and the gravy is rich and spicy and complex, stir in the cooked mushrooms. At this point, I'll stir in a tablespoon of sour cream and a big meal of black pepper and I'll taste to see if it needs salt. If yes, salt. That's it. We've always served it with white rice. Mum used to put the rice around the outside of the plate and put the steamy beefy stew in the centre. So that's what I do too. Unlike mum, I always serve it with roasted sweet potato. I wonder how my kids will adapt it. Thanks mum. Enjoy. <laughs>